Hey gamers and Bat fans, it's Kaywink here, and Batman Month continues with Episode 2, a double feature review of Batman for the NES and the Genesis. First up, the NES cult classic, Batman. Story for this game. Now the game's story follows the events after Jack Napier has been transformed into the Joker. It's now up to Batman to track down the Joker and confront and stop his parents' killer. Concept for this game. The whole point of the game is to guide Batman throughout Gotham City, from the busy streets of Gotham to the Access Chemical Plant, the Warehouse District, and even the sewers and the caverns beneath Gotham City. You also have to go to the Gotham Cathedral. Along the way, Batman's going to fight at least five different unique bosses, until finally you can come face to face with your parents' killer, the Joker, and send him to dance with the devil by the pale moonlight. Alright, time for the controls for this game. Alrighty, now you move the Cape Crusader by pressing the Command Cross, and you punch by pressing the B button. Press Select will cycle through your three different weapons. Here you can see that we're using the Batarang, which is great for people who are further away from you, and the punch is great for when you're in close combat. You also have a missile gun, which only shoots one missile at a time, but it's great for fighting like the flamethrower guys and stronger single enemies. Now you jump by pressing the A button and Batman gets some pretty awesome distance. And for these guys here who are dumb enough not to shoot and duck at the same time, you can dispatch them pretty easily by just punching them, because they're just retarded. Anyway, these enemies here, they're actually pretty difficult, so you want to use your strongest gun, and it shoots three bursts at a time. Now most of the time, enemies will drop health and ammunition for you, which is great. Wall jumping is probably the coolest option in this game and the ability that Batman can do, and it's not too difficult at all. Actually, all you do is when Batman jumps, he has the ability to latch onto a wall, and he just pushes himself off it. So all you do is, in a rhythm, just keep pressing the A button, you don't even have to do anything with the directional pad, really. And he just kind of jumps off stuff. And what's great about this is you can definitely see this as something that Batman would do. And it really comes across as, I'm Batman. Alright, time for the design for this. Batman and Ninja Gaiden may look like they're closely related in the design area, but only for a minute or two. Some of the Batman stages are so well made, and they're just, they really pushed what the NES could do in the late 80s. And that's something. I mean, there was a lot of things going on. I mean, like here in the fire thing. This may be reminiscent to the Ninja Gaiden 2 fire pit, but it's still pretty cool. The cathedral, in my opinion, is probably the coolest stage in the game, and it's kind of the gauntlet of the game, if you will. There's, like, so many bad guys there, and there's just so much going on. It's just awesome. History for this game. Batman the movie in 1989 put an end to the campy Batman of old. Batman the video game used cutscenes to tell the story much like Ninja Gaiden before it. The game's music in Batman is not only one of the best on the NES, it's amazingly awesome 19 years later. Return of the Joker is a direct sequel of the NES hit Batman, and the Game Boy game was pretty cool. In 1990, Batman saw a remake for the Sega Genesis, although it was more in tied to the movie. Time for the bad aspect. I really wish you could drive the Batmobile and the Batwing in this game. And also, the Joker is tall, but he's not supposed to be an Amazon! Plus, the fight is pretty hard. Also, I really hated this guy. You know that frog-looking thing that jumps up and down and always kills you? I always hated him from my childhood, and the one thing I remember that I hated about them so much is they travel in pairs. Now, that's just wrong. Another thing I really didn't like about this game, and I do like tanks, but I don't like tanks with Batman. It's realistic that a tank kills Batman, but in a Batman video game, Batman should be able to kill a tank, no sweat. Time for the good aspect. Batman in the 80s was very dark. The same can be said about in the game. Batman exits and enters each level through the shadows. Now the cutscenes are cool, but Ninja Gaiden was better. The boss fight with the Joker is insanely hard, like really test your skills as a gamer hard. And when Batman dies, he bursts into flames. Fighting this boss is my tip for you guys. When he throws that fireball, jump with all your might, just remember to throw the Batarangs. Now, Batman on the NES not only had great music, but perfect controls too. Add fun to the mix, and then the Dark Knight himself, you have yourself one astounding gaming experience. I give this game an excellent 8 out of 10. Story for this game. Batman is slowly making a name for himself on the streets of Gotham City, although the public still sees Batman as just an urban myth told by scared punks. Now, Batman continues to wage his war on crime against the Grissom mob at the Axis chemical plant, 
Here, Jack Napier, the mob's main enforcer and all-around bad dude, meets the Dark Knight, who knocks him into a vat of toxic chemicals. Batman escapes the plant, thinking that Jack has met his demise and Batman's popularity grows in Gotham. But in Jack's wake, something more sinister is arising from the murky waters. Concept for this game. Okay, I know what you guys are saying. This is the same game as before. Well, yes and no. I mean, Batman has to go through Gotham City, he has to take on the mob, he's got to beat Joker's men, he's got to clean up the streets of Gotham. Ooh, look! You get to drive in the Batmobile! And the Batwing! That's different, right? Yay! Yay for different! And you have to fight a bunch of bosses just like you did in the NES game. Okay, so it's basically the same thing. At least the graphics look better, right? <laughs> yeah, I didn't think you'd like that. Alright, time for the controls for this game. The gameplay is actually pretty decent in this game. You punch by pressing the B button, and the A button acts as your jump. And do you see how high Batman can jump? You can also double jump by pressing the A button, and Batman will do kind of like this falcon knee thing. But most of the time you're going to end up, yeah, sweep kicking your enemy. You can also block by holding in the punch button, but you still lose damage, which kind of sucks. You throw batarangs and stuff by the C button, and the C button by pressing up also acts as your back grapple gun, which is kind of cool. Still, what makes this game stand out among the other Batman games is the Batwing and the Batmobile levels. Now I know what you're saying, this looks like Gradius or R-Type. Well, it's pretty much the same thing. You shoot, and you shoot a secondary weapon, and you just dodge and stuff. So it's fun. Designed for this game. One incredibly awesome thing that Batman on Genesis has going for it is how the game looks. This is a very beautiful game. Compared to its NES counterpart, this is a much better designed game. And on top of that, if you're a fan of the 1989 movie, the game's locations are just like in the movie, so that's something really good. History for this game. Batman the Movie starring Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson was such a huge success that in 1990, Sega wanted to ride its coattails with their movie game. Now, the Genesis game was what we would call a successful movie game. Well, sort of. Now, the Batwing level is almost identical to the Nintendo Game Boy, and that's not a bad thing, considering it's still so much fun. Just like with the NES, Joker returned, although for the Genesis game, it was Revenge of the Joker, and it was an abysmal failure. Time for the bad aspect. As cool as the back grapple is, it doesn't always work the first time you do it. In fact, you have to line Batman up correctly most of the time, or he'll miss his target. Even though this game is considered a remake, it removed the wall jump, one of the coolest things of the last game. And guess what? This game's combat is also terrible. Most of the time, Batman will end up sweep kicking his enemies because the block just doesn't work. So you really don't feel like the Dark Knight in this game at all because it's like, okay, Batman would not sweep kick an enemy. Now that I think of it, there's only really one enemy Batman can punch. It's these fat clowns that blow fire at you. And just when you think, okay, I can punch more bad guys, nope, you're back to sweep kicking. <sighs> Time for the good aspect. Batman's stage intro is so worthy of the Dark Knight. I mean, look at how he comes down! Awesome! Now, the cutscenes in this game are a step up from the NES one, and you can see a bit of early 3D, too. Now, the boss fight with the Joker is much easier this time. Just falcon him to death! For the most part, this is a decent Batman game, and a fun one at that. Still, with less than a perfect combat system, leaves one feeling a bit hollow inside. Unless, of course, you like kicking people in the shins. Still, isn't that more Batgirl's forte? Nonetheless, what gives the game a better score is the Batmobile and the Batwing levels. They are so addicting and fun to play! Sega had a great movie port here, and all in all, it's a pretty decent Batman game. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed Episode 2 of Batman Month and the first video of the review series with The Joker. This game gets a 7 out of 10, which is good, trust me. I love the Batwing stages. Awesome! Next review is the most horrible Batman game ever! No, I'm not talking Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. Batman Dark Tomorrow. It had so much potential, and I'm going to rip this game into tiny pieces, so people that like that kind of thing enjoy. Well, God bless and happy gaming. Thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe. <laughs>